As we approach the final days of October, the first authentic whispers of winter are beginning to echo across the United States. Temperatures are plunging sharply through the northern tier, and the season's first surge of Arctic air is preparing to sweep into the Midwest and Great Lakes before the month concludes. This early season chill will mark the opening act of a cold and active pattern, one that could shape into one of the snowiest, most unforgettable winters in recent memory. A season drawing striking parallels to the legendary winter of 2013 to 2014. Through late October into early November, the jet stream will begin to buckle dramatically, carving a deep trough into the heart of the nation. This will unleash frigid Canadian air southward, spilling deep into the southern plains and even reaching portions of the interior southeast. Cities like Chicago, Minneapolis, and Detroit could record their first measurable snowfall by early November, with two to four inches possible across parts of the upper Midwest, right out of the gate. Even Kansas City and St. Louis might witness their first flakes ahead of schedule, as moisture riding the southern branch of the jet stream collides with that early Arctic air mass. As November progresses, the cold pattern will tighten its grip. A parade of Alberta clippers and early season coastal storms will sweep through delivering steady rounds of light to moderate snow across the northern United States. By Thanksgiving, many regions from the Dakotas through the Great Lakes into northern New England could already be running near or above seasonal snowfall averages. Cleveland, Buffalo, and Syracuse may each sit under a foot to a foot and a half of snow, while Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and Columbus experience a few mixed rain and snow events. Meanwhile, the southeast will turn noticeably crisper, with frosty dawns stretching from northern Alabama through the Carolinas. By the way, if you'd like a forecast tailored to your city or region, drop it in the comments. I'll respond to as many as I can. And if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Your support truly helps this channel grow. Now December appears to be when winter fully tightens its grasp. Long-range model guidance continues to signal a strongly negative Arctic oscillation, paving the way for repeated invasions of polar air deep into the continental U.S., the Great Lakes likely to remain unfrozen longer than usual due to the mild start of autumn, will become prime engines for lake-effect snow once the Arctic air arrives. Areas downwind of Lakes Erie and Ontario could endure multiple heavy snow events, with local totals surpassing three to four feet by Christmas. Cities like Buffalo, Erie, and Syracuse may once again dominate national headlines for their monumental snowfall, while Cleveland and Grand Rapids could each rack up around 30 inches in December alone, a remarkable opening to the season. Farther west, the northern plains and upper Midwest will face relentless cold and frequent snowbursts. Minneapolis, Fargo, and Sioux Falls may total 20 to 30 inches of snow through December, with temperatures running 10 to 15 degrees below average. In the Rockies, the snowpack will build rapidly, and Denver could see 25 inches or more by New Year's Day. Across the Pacific Northwest, a vigorous jet stream will keep the region stormy, delivering steady rain and abundant high-elevation snow. The Cascades, Mount Rainier, and Idaho's mountain ranges might accumulate over 100 inches by month's end. Back east, the coastal storm track looks increasingly favorable for major nor'easters, with cold air entrenched. Even the major metropolitan corridor along Hawaii 95, New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. could experience more frequent snowfalls than recent years, ending December with 10 to 15 inches apiece, slightly above normal, but nothing extreme, at least not yet. Boston and Hartford could fare far better, potentially racking up 20 inches or more before year's end, fueled by a few classic nor'easters racing up the coast during mid to late December. As we step into January, the true heart of winter begins to beat. The pattern taking shape looks strikingly reminiscent of 2013-2014, a month dominated by sub-freezing temperatures, frequent snow events, and a stubbornly blocked jet stream that refuses to release its grip. During that legendary winter, Persistent Greenland blocking locked frigid air over the eastern two-thirds of the nation, and early indicators suggest a similar atmospheric setup may unfold again. The polar jet stream will dive deep into the Mississippi Valley, drawing Arctic air as far south as the Deep South itself. Cities like Nashville, Birmingham, and Atlanta could witness light snow or icy precipitation, while the Tennessee and Ohio Valleys see repeated wintry mixes. Meanwhile, the Great Lakes and the Northeast are set to bear the brunt of the season's fury. Buffalo could easily exceed 90 inches of snow by late January, with Syracuse and Watertown not far behind at 60 to 70 inches. Chicago might be closing in on 40 inches, while Detroit and Cleveland sit between 35 and 45 inches. Farther east, Boston could be on pace for a 70-inch season, 
and New York City and Philadelphia may tally 25 to 35 inches, well above the muted averages of recent years. Even Washington, D.C. could break the 10-inch mark, signaling a sharp return to true winter form. Across the western U.S., a dominantly cold regime will grip the northern Rockies, Sierra Nevada, and Intermountain West. Denver could surpass 45 inches by late January, and Salt Lake City might approach 60 inches. The Sierra Nevada's snowpack will grow steadily, with totals nearing 80 to 100 inches, vital for California's water reserves. The Pacific Northwest will stay storm active, though mild Pacific intrusions may occasionally limit lowland snow. Higher terrain, including the Cascades and Blue Mountains, will be buried under multiple feet of snow. As February arrives, the cold pattern persists, though subtle moderation may emerge near month's end. For the first three weeks, however, much of the country will remain solidly wintry. The Central Plains, Great Lakes, and Northeast will continue to stack up impressive totals as a high-energy jet stream fuels recurring storm systems. By late February, Chicago could approach 55 inches for the season, Cleveland and Detroit around 60 inches, and Minneapolis may surpass 70 inches. Buffalo could once again top 100 inches by mid-February, while across New England, Boston might near 75 inches, and Albany, Burlington, and Bangor could soar past 80 inches or more. In the south, the chill won't be as unrelenting as January's, but occasional Arctic bursts will still bring frost and light snow into the Tennessee Valley, northern Georgia, and the Carolinas. Even Dallas and Oklahoma City might see a couple of light snow or sleet events, though the heaviest winter impacts will remain to the north. Out west, milder Pacific air should gradually return late in the month, but by then, mountain snowpacks will already sit well above average particularly across the northern Rockies and Sierra Nevada. By the time we turn the page into March, the story of winter 2024-2025 will be unmistakable, a season both memorable and formidable. Many regions will finish 10-20% to 20 above normal snowfall, not to record-breaking extremes, but certainly a decisive shift toward the kind of winter North America hasn't seen in years. For comparison, the winter of 2013-2014 delivered record-shattering cold and relentless snow across the Midwest and Northeast. While this year may not match that level of brutality, it's on track to be the coldest and snowiest since then for much of the country. Regional Breakdown Northeast 60-90 inches common across upstate New York and northern New England 25-40 inches along the I-95 corridor Great Lakes and Midwest 50-80 inches widespread locally over 100 inches in lake effect belts Northern Plains 40-60 inches typical with bitter Arctic cold dominating Central Plains 20-35 inches higher totals in eastern Kansas and Nebraska Rockies and Intermountain West, 60-100 inches common. Mountain peaks far higher. Pacific Northwest, 50-80 inches in mountains. Frequent lowland rain. South, 5-10 inches in the Tennessee Valley and interior southeast, with occasional ice events possible. All in all, this winter promises to be a resounding reminder of what a true North American winter feels like. Colder, snowier, and more enduring than anything seen in recent years. The first true Arctic air mass is just days away bringing the season's initial deep freeze to the Midwest and Great Lakes, and setting into motion a long, powerful, and unforgettable stretch of winter weather that could extend well into March.